team members really want, there are a lot of people who have been innovative and really want to make things happen for these and for all, all students yes. is what we're talking about. And so uh, in parting, do you have uh, uh, advice for that? Some are in leadership and some are in sort of in the middle of the institution. Do you have uh, advice for them in terms of, you know, what can they do to make it make a difference from where they're, they're at and, and follow some of these uh, ideals uh, well, important. well, you know, me, I was once characterized as being occasionally wrong, but never in doubt. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, I think the first thing is to recognize and, and go out and find out in your community, the world is changing. There are resources and opportunities and people doing things. Find out what's around you, what's there. And I think community colleges, I know they've had a tough couple of years. I think community colleges, frankly, and, and state colleges, um, lo more local institutions are going to be in a very advantageous spot if they do this and rethink how they relate to the community around them. And they've been doing it in certain ways and they're good at it and all that, but they're going to have to change too. Uh, but I think they're in a very advantageous position. But the first thing is, Find out what's around you. Don't deal in abstractions, deal in concrete things. So if there's a specific idea of a specific employer that, and, and you can, and you're assessing prior learning, that you can figure out a way to do it in a particular context for returning veterans. And you take, okay, we're gonna just focus on returning on veterans. And we're gonna look at the value of their military service. And try it as an experiment. Put it in your continuing education department but don't make that an iron wall. And if it works, they can translate that credit into a degree program. So protect the, <clears throat> oftentimes when we experiment, we just do it in the middle of our daily operations. And in candor, my experience is one, if you're running an institution, you have daily operations and you need to protect those operations because not every experiment works, but you also, Equally often, the experiment, the culture of the daily operations will eat the experiment. Culture yeah. will eat yeah. change all day long. So you have to figure out how to protect the daily operations from the experiment and the experiment from the daily operations. But if it works, have an agreement. So be, be practical, abstract arguments, uh, although I've been making several of them today, when you're in a real-time situation, uh, and I, the, there are, you talk about untapped resources. The people in higher education today that want to make positive, dramatic change around recognition of learning and respect for learners from all sources, there's an enormous number of them. In an ironic way, they're as trapped inside the system they're trying to change as the people they would like to serve are trapped outside the system trying to get in. And so to me, it, it, it's, it's seeing what's out there and the, and the heart of it all for me is recognizing that learning happens everywhere and the farther we can go towards making, making that the linchpin of the change, recognizing the learning people bring, helping them think about how to get where they want to go. And then my job is to help them get where they are to where they want to go. I re and not asking them to repeat things they already know and pay me money to do it. Because there's a lot of good people out there that are dying to make these changes or changes like them. There are characteristics of success in this new world. And so we look for the characteristics that will, that will tell us that quality exists. So it isn't a model which we then take confidence in for everybody, but there are five or six or seven characteristics, great student advice, assessment of prior learning, employment after graduation, you know, those kinds of things uh, that tell us that regardless of what the model looks like, it's working. That's, yeah. that's what we want. I, I, I'm really taken by what you're saying that learning happens everywhere. And somehow we have to figure out how to how to recognize that learning. And, and how do we do that? There's multiple ways of doing that. With, with that, uh, Peter, thank you so much for writing the book. Thank you for oh. your contributions to WCT and to higher education in general. This has been uh, a great discussion. Thank you for your time. Well, Russ, thank you and thank WCT. I'm flattered, honored. <laughs>